What's going on guys? Today I'm gonna to show you how to paint a vault cover. Welcome back. Today is gonna be a very good day. I'm gonna show you guys how to paint the valve cover of my Miata. And it's not gonna be just any color. Today we are gonna actually gonna use floral paint. I'm gonna make it look very intense. I've never used this particular color, so it's gonna be a first time for me. And let's see how it turns out. All right, so if you guys can see here, I have a bunch of different cans. I have sandpaper, I have a mask. I have some tape and I have a glove, which is pretty much what you necessarily need to uh, paint your wall cover. I'm also going to be using a clear wrap so I can uh, cover the floor that we're going to get overspray in it. But the most important part around here is this. It's going to be the prep work, which is after you take your wall cover out, you want to be able to clean and take all the grease and all the nastiness off of it. In my case, I'm lucky enough that my wall cover doesn't have any paint from the manufacturer or from previous owner. It's already stripped, so all I gotta do is clean it very, very, very well. Uh, we are going to be using fluorescent paint. And the thing about fluorescent paint is that the base coat must be absolutely perfect. In my case, I'm gonna be using a white base. I have four colors here, but I've actually seen five. This is uh, floral pink. We have orange. Here we go. We have red. This is the first time I've seen red. I've never seen red before, so I picked that out and I'm gonna try this color because I have shot every other color except this one. So I'm gonna try this one out. Floral yellow, which we use a lot around the shop. The most important part, with this clear coat, you'll be able to make whatever part you paint look like it got powder coated. You guys see how there's oil on the inside but not on the outside? That's good, that means that was sealing. But back here, you see all this nastiness? That means it all was going over and it wasn't sealing right. It was going over there. All of this was leaking oil and the center as well. So I already have the valve cover gasket and I also have brand new spark plugs which I'm gonna be replaced, which I'm gonna end up needing anyways. But we're gonna put a new seal when we put the valve cover back in it. All right guys, another valve cover is off. I'm gonna be taking the old gasket off and I'm gonna be cleaning everything around it. Since I don't have to strip my valve cover, since it's already raw, now I don't have to use paint stripper, which is what the, uh, the aircraft paint remover is and the citrus stuff that I bought with it. So what I'm gonna be using, I'm just gonna be using our trusted degreaser, which is a serious power from Meguiar's. I'm gonna use this to clean all the oil base out of it, take all these gaskets off and then remove the sensor, the, uh, the PVC valve and then the, uh, the camshaft sensor out of the way, take the oil cap off. And then that's it, we'll get to uh, prepping. A few minutes later. All right guys, so I just got done cleaning my valve cover with the uh, degreaser that I just showed you. I air blew with my air compressor. And as you guys can see, there's still some areas that are, that are semi wet. So I'm just gonna leave it for maybe about half hour so it can completely air dry on its own. And you guys see here, all these little um, threaded portions that the car has. I am actually gonna put the screws back in there so that way the threads don't get full of paint. And what I'm gonna do on the head of the uh, screw, I'm gonna put tape on it. That way the head won't be, first of all, full of paint. And then I'll be able to remove it after the, uh, the valve cover gets painted without touching the valve cover at all. One of the main things that I did when I was cleaning the valve cover right here on the grooves, I made sure I cleaned that very, very well with a toothbrush and some degreaser. And I know a lot of people are gonna say, why would you paint the valve cover? It's raw aluminum for a reset, so it can dispense heating, blah, blah, blah. This is not a race car. I'm not gonna be doing something crazy with it. Yes, I am gonna be having fun, but not to the extent that I'm gonna be pushing 500 horsepower. So me painting this is not gonna make a difference in my car. This portion, I ended up using two uh, ear plugs, the foamy ones. I ended up using two of them because the hole is so big. That's what she said. 
Uh, the only thing that you have to be careful about putting stuff outside when you're painting, that's why I like to do it in, in this enclosed garage, because it's all the debris that's outside and it, the dirt and the people start cutting their grass around your neighborhood and it's just gonna get full of stuff. So what I always like to do, which I already did here, I like to sweep and mop the floor, let it dry, and then I lay the plastic over it. And then that way you know you have a completely clean surface. Okay, update. I ended up putting that on top of a two by four or a couple of two by fours, because I wanted it off the ground so I'm able to get all the way around the corners with the white without any issues. This clear coat is extremely, extremely strong and the uh, overspray on it is a lot more than the, uh, than the paint that we're gonna be using. This is literally automotive clear and it even has the activator at the bottom that you will press and then you mix it. And then you're good to use it for, the, for 24 hours. After that, it is useless, you cannot use it. And just to do a ball cover, I don't think it's, it's enough. You may be gonna use just a, a, a eighth of it. So what you wanna do, you wanna have a bunch of stuff ready to paint before you activate the uh, clear coat and then uh, spray everything at once. You'll be able to do multiple vacars. This first coat that I put in it, it's gonna be very, very, very light. We're gonna let it sit there for about 10 minutes. And once the 10 minutes is done, we'll do a second coat a little bit thicker and the third coat, we'll do it until everything is completely covered in white. Now remember, everything must be covered in white. There could be no darker spots, no black shades, because all of it will reflect on the floral paint. It needs to be bright white, as perfect as possible. Now you guys notice that I use a little bit of a heat gun right after and that's just so the paint won't run and it'll stay right in place right where I sprayed it. Always have a heat gun ready if you know that you spray too much in one area and you know for a fact it's gonna, it's gonna start running or you think it's gonna start running, grab the heat gun right away, start hitting that area, that entire area and it'll prevent it from running. Here's the second corner, it's already looking almost there. Let me show you some of the stuff to be careful with. You guys see how that area is a little bit darker than the rest? Once you spray the floor and the clear coat over it, it's gonna show like if it was black and everything else was red. It doesn't matter how much floor you put in it, it's not gonna cover it. The base coat is what matters in this case. The 16 valve, all that needs to be, there needs to be more white in there. And the best thing is just to let it dry, dry it, and then spray a little bit, let it dry, spray a little bit in between there. Um, so just take your time. So this last one, I mainly focus myself on getting the hard to reach areas. The ones that I showed you before on the, on the previous clip. I just literally focus on the corners. The last coat, which is in our case, is gonna be the fourth coat. I'm literally just gonna do, uh, do one solid coat all the way across, let it dry, and then we'll start putting color in it. 20 minutes later. All right, so here comes the inspection of the white already dried. And I just left it here for about 20 minutes so it can dry it on its own. And it's dry enough so we can start laying our, our actual color. So next up, we're gonna do the same thing we did with the white. We're gonna throw a very thin layer of red around the area. We're gonna let it dry for 10 minutes and then we're gonna start doing thicker coats. We'll probably do about three or four of them as well. And remember, the floral paint is more like a tint. It's not really actual paint. So that's why the base coat, the white base coat has to be perfect. dries extremely extremely quick as I'm spraying it you can see it drying right away that's why I haven't stopped um, I'm mainly focusing right now on the hard to reach areas once that's all painted and coated then I'm gonna start focusing on the big area even though it seems like I'm focusing on the big area but I'm not I'm actually focusing on the hard to reach places I'm hitting that really uh, direct 
different angles, up, down, left, right, going around. I'm doing a bunch of... Please, no gang signs. No, throw it up, I'm kidding. Different ways to start to get out those really, really hard to read places. Um, so far it's working. And I'll show you in a minute once I do another coat. Um, I really want to finish this area out. Very intense. I mean, it kind of looks like like an orange, right? Like a like a caution cone from the streets. That's pretty much what it looks like. This is supposed to be the red one. The orange is it is a little bit lighter than this, but this is almost like an orange. It's not really a red. But so far, I think I got everything covered pretty well. Once we apply the clear coat, that's when it's really, really gonna show. All right, guys. So while the ball cover is drying. Um, this is the clear coat, right? You guys see this red cap? I'm gonna take this red cap off. At the bottom, you're gonna see a little nipple. You're gonna put the cap in there, and then we're gonna press on it. You guys heard that? Now that that's pressed, you wanna leave it there upside down for about 10 seconds. Uh, and what it's doing, that's the activator for the clear coat, so that way it can dry in time. Because right, if you spray it without doing this, it's never gonna dry. So we wait the 10 seconds, and then after that, you're just gonna start shaking the living Christ out of it. And then, we get to spray. One eternity later. Right now, I have a fan in the other side of the garage, as you guys can see here. I have a fan on that door, and I have that window open so I can push the fumes out. And I'm keeping this door and that closed because I don't want any debris going in there. Right now I have the clear coat heating up with the heat gun. When it comes to spraying the clear coat, guys, you have to throw it really, really, really thick. Really thick, not too close, about six inches should be fine. But thick enough that it won't run. You know what I'm saying? I mean, this clear coat is very good. It, it, holds, it holds together very well. Um, but you have to throw it really thick in order for you to get that powder coat effect, that really clear, glossy, glossy area. I'm gonna try to do my best not to make it run, and I always have the heat gun handy so I can heat, I start putting some heat on it right after I get done doing the clear coat. Alright, that's the first one. We'll let it dry for about 10 15 minutes, then we'll come back and do another coat. 15 minutes later. Here it is with the second coat of clear. And as you can see, it's super, super wet. And I did two really thick coats. Like, I mean, I was holding it and I was, I was waiting for this really thick uh, look. Um, so far, I don't see anything running. Hopefully it'll stay that way. I hit it, I did, a, I put a little bit of heat with the heat gun. And if you want to practice uh, with something else, maybe you should do like a small rod, and then that way you can see how thick it needs to be. And the clear coat holds very, very well. It, it's really hard to make it run. Like you will have to do some ridiculously amount of paint in order for this thing to run. It's a really, really good clear. Now while the drying of the ball cover is happening, I'm actually going to start cleaning out the mess that I have here. Oh, so I'm gonna clean all these out the edges, all these back here. A little later. So I cleaned everything off already for the ball cover gasket. Usually when you have this, this camshaft covers right here, you put silicone right here and then you put the ball cover gasket over it. That way it seals this portion in all, what is it, six corners. Uh, so I removed the old silicone and I'm gonna be doing my own silicone on it. But everything from this point should be, this thing's gonna be running excellent. All right guys, it's been about 45 minutes since I put the ball cover outside to dry. So check how bright this thing is. Obviously, it's not real like it was supposed to. But it's definitely ridiculously loud. Look at it. <laughs> I love it. I really, really, really like it. That's crazy. All right, guys. Our uh, BBT just finished drying. It's completely black. I cleaned. All of this is completely cleaned up and it's ready to be installed. The new spark plugs are in it and everything is completely clean all the way around. The only thing we are still waiting for is for this thing to finish drying. A little later. Uh, you guys see this, uh, the bolts that I used to cover the holes? Uh, as you can see, it worked. None of them are full of paint. Just grab a little wire brush and you can take the remaining of the uh, paint off of this. I have a wire wheel, so that's probably what I'll be using. With the wire wheel, I should spin it and take the rest of it off. 
and then they'll be they'll be ready to use if you, if you have spare bolts um, just use whatever spare bolts you have to cover them that way you don't have to clean them after all right guys so i couldn't wait any longer uh, it is still the same day it's just late at night um, I totally forgot that I have to move this car to the original spot that it was this morning in order for me to get my other cars inside. I have to put this thing back together tonight. So it's still not time for me to put it in, but I have to do it anyways. But so far I just put the, uh, the main bolt because I put the gasket in it and I didn't want it falling. So I kind of hurry up and did that part. Uh, and I'm going to show you guys how I'm going to put the coils back in it. So it has a new gasket in it. Uh, oh yeah, I painted that black. Look how it looks. It looks really good. It would have been nice if I would have painted this black. Um, under the clear coat. I mean, I guess you can do it now and it won't be a big deal. I'll probably have my wife do that. She's really good at doing, doing little stuff like that. Um, I'm not. If I would've done that, I would've screwed it up. But it looks really good with the purple, right? We have officially accomplished on painting the ball cover. Uh, if you guys have any questions or have any other ideas on another how to video that I can do here in my garage, uh, and I try to do stuff uh, that anybody can do in their garage like I'm doing here. I don't have a lifter here, I don't have anything crazy, I just got basic tools, uh, and, I'm, and I'm pretty sure most of us, most of the viewers uh, are in the same situation that I am right now. So hopefully this thing will work for you, and you can you don't just have to do a ball cover like I just did the same process. You can use the same process for anything in your car, whether it's the intake for your car, whether it's the intake manifold. I wouldn't do headers or anything that gets to that extreme of heat, but I, you can do strap bars, for example. Hey guys, I also have another question for you guys. Uh, you guys interested in at all? and watching me build this uh, little by little. This is not something that was intended to be in the throttle channel at all. This is my personal build and I, and I have other projects that I build here in my house on weekends uh, that are not in the, in the channel. Um, but let me know, since I'm gonna be home and I'm gonna be doing a lot of videos from home, let me know if this is something that you guys wanna see and maybe I'll upload some videos uh, through the channel. Uh, it's up to you. Uh, the overall uh, plan for this is for me to take it out and have fun. Whether it's drifting or, or I don't know, uh, road racing, whatever it may be, I'm trying to build like something just to have fun with. This is not something that's going to mend or or it will go on the streets, off road use only. I do have some pipe there, and I bought a pipe bender. I've never done pipe bending or a cage before. This is going to be my first time trying it. I also have some off road lights that I bought that I'm going to be adding to this. Uh, the seat needs some love, so you guys can see. And I still gotta do a lot in the back. Um, let me know if this is something that you're interested uh, on seeing. And uh, I don't know, maybe I'll upload a few videos, see how it goes, all right guys? Uh, so take it easy, see you on the next one.